As part of the lecture series for OBGYN residents at Christiana Hospital in Newark, Delaware, this is a summary of the ACOG Practice Bulletin on Macrosomia for November 2016. Two terms are often used to refer to excessive fetal growth. The first is large for gestational age, or LGA. It's a relative term and includes fetuses with an estimated weight greater than the 90th percentile for a given gestational age. The second term is an absolute term, meaning a specific weight cutoff, irrespective of the gestational age. However, there's no agreement about what that cutoff is, with some using 4,000 grams and some using 4,500 grams. While the practice bulletin includes a table of percentiles at a particular gestational age in the third trimester, one figure is worth remembering for context. The 90th percentile at 40 weeks is about 4,000 grams. What's clinically important about macrosomia is whether a fetal weight is associated with adverse outcomes. For the purpose of clarity, the practice bulletin defines macrosomia as greater than 4,000 grams. It goes on to stratify the macrosomia into three categories. The first, 4,000 to 4,499. In this category, there is an increased risk of labor abnormalities and newborn complications. The second group, 4,500 to 4,999. In this category, there is additional risk of maternal and newborn morbidity. And the third category, greater than 5,000 grams. In this category, there is additional risk of stillbirth and neonatal mortality. What's the scope of this problem? What's the frequency of macrosomia? Well, 8% of all liveborns weigh in excess of 4,000 grams. Only 1% of liveborns weigh more than 4,500 grams. What's the frequency of shoulder dystocia, the most serious complication of fetal macrosomia? Now, the definition of shoulder dystocia used here is more than downward traction. The range cited for all deliveries is 0.2 to 3%. And the loose definition probably accounts for the fact that the upper end of the estimate is more than 10 times the lower estimate. But more importantly, the range cited for those with a birth weight of greater than 4,500 grams is 9 to 14%. Remember, 4,500 grams is 9.9 pounds. So just remember that the incidence of shoulder dystocia in babies weighing more than 10 pounds is about 10%. But keep in mind that although macrosomia increases the risk of shoulder dystocia, most shoulder dystocias are unpredictable and occur in fetuses with normal weight. Remember, 99% of babies weigh less than 4,500 grams. 99% of babies weigh less than 10 pounds. When it comes to predicting macrosomia, knowing the risk factors is helpful. Diabetes is the biggest, but what are the other risk factors? The top three, besides diabetes, in order are 1. Prior macrosomic infant 2. Increased maternal pre-pregnancy weight and 3. Increased maternal weight gain and the rest, in order, are multiparity, male fetus, ethnicity, gestational age over 40 weeks, maternal birth weight, maternal height, maternal age less than 17, and an abnormal one-hour GTT with a normal three-hour GTT. Anthropomorphic studies show that fetuses and moms with carbohydrate intolerance are different than those with other risk factors for macrosomia. Having increased body fat, increased shoulder and upper extremity circumferences, and lower head-to-body ratios. How do we make the diagnosis of fetal macrosomia? Studies of ultrasound versus physical exam are inconsistent. Ultrasound has not been shown to be better than physical exam. In fact, a Paris woman's estimate is equivalent to ultrasound, which is equivalent to clinical palpation by an experienced examiner. All right, let's talk about maternal morbidity because more maternal and newborn morbidity are what is significant about macrosomia. Vaginal delivery of a macrosomic infant increases the risk of postpartum hemorrhage and laceration as one might expect, but the primary risk to the mother is the risk of cesarean section. Studies show that inaccurate ultrasound predictions of macrosomia leads to an increased risk of diagnosis of labor abnormalities irrespective of the actual birth weight. 
So not only does macrosomia increase the cesarean section rate, just thinking about it increases the cesarean section rate. How about the risks to the fetus? In a fetus weighing more than 4,500 grams, the risk of clavicular fracture increases 10 times, and the risk of brachial plexus injury, specifically C5, C6, or herb Duchenne paralysis, is 18 to 20 times higher. And the persistence of the injury increases the higher the birth weight. To recap the accuracy of ultrasound in predicting a birth weight of greater than 4,500 grams, the positive predictive value is 30 to 44 percent, and the negative predictive value is 97 to 99 percent. Remember, these statistics are affected by the prevalence of the condition, and only 1 percent are greater than 4,500 grams. Therefore, if an ultrasound says a fetus is over 4,500 grams, only 30 to 44 percent of the time will that be correct. Another way of saying that is, it's usually wrong. When should cesarean section be considered? A study where cesarean section was performed for fetuses estimated to be greater than 4250 reduced the shoulder dystocia rate from 2.8% to 1.5%, but half of the fetuses estimated to be greater than 4250 were actually less than 4000 grams. The bulletin admits that although the positive predictive value of fetuses over 5000 grams is poor, and the lack of evidence supporting cesarean section at any estimated fetal weight, most authors agree that consideration should be given to C-section if the estimated fetal weight is greater than 5,000 grams, or 11 pounds. Is there any role for induction? No. It increases the cesarean section rate without a reduction in the risk of shoulder dystocia. Should the diagnosis affect the management of labor? Since the risk of shoulder dystocia in a fetus greater than 4,500 grams with an operative vaginal delivery, that's forceps or vacuum, is 50%, don't do it. This especially refers to the existence of a mid-pelvic arrest, but it's not confined to that. Although the likelihood of success of trial of labor after cesarean section decreases with macrosomia, it's not less than 50% and therefore not considered a contraindication. Here's the summary. Level A evidence, diagnosis is imprecise, ultrasound is equivalent to clinical estimates. Level B, macrosomia is not an indication for induction. If estimated fetal weight is greater than 4,500, proceed to cesarean section for arrestive descent or prolonged second stage. The true value of ultrasound is ruling out macrosomia. Level C, cesarean section for estimated fetal weight of greater than 5,000 grams or greater than 4,500 in the presence of diabetes should be considered. And macrosomia alone does not preclude TOLAC, trial of labor after cesarean.